discussion in which we would look at CPA exam questions that deals with the equity method of investment. The equity method of investment is an important topic on the CPA exam. So you cannot take the exam if you are not comfortable with this method. I'll tell you why not. Because when you take the exam and you have an issue, a weakness in the equity method or in the statement of cash flows or pension or deferred taxes or the conceptual framework or governmental accounting, simply put with any topic, it's considered major topic and practically their own major topic. You will not be able to pass the exam. I will tell you why. They might throw at you, starting at the beginning of the exam, an easy to medium question. Let's say easy question about the equity method. And the AICPA thinks that this question should be 80% of candidates get this question right. So it's considered easy, 80 to 90%. If you get this question wrong, it's going to alert the software and, and in turn the AICPA that you don't understand the equity method. Now they might give you a pass on this. Well, maybe this individual misread the question, did not under, you know, answered it quickly. Then they might give you another question about the equity method. If you get it wrong, then now they are starting to believe that you don't understand the equity method. They give you a third question to confirm. You get it wrong. Then now you're heading toward a 75% uh, less than 75% score, which is a failing score. That's why for the CPA exam, you have to be prepared. You have to understand all the topics. And that's why when you fail, you notice they give you disproportionate questions about the same topic repeatedly. For example, leases or the equity method. And the reason is because they notice that weakness and they want to make sure they're failing you because of that weakness. Now, how can I help you when it comes to that? Well, my website, farhatlectures.com, whether you are an accounting student studying this topic or a CPA candidate, especially if you're a CPA candidate, I do provide detailed lessons about all various topics on the exam. No, I don't replace your Wiley, your Glein, your Roger, and your Becker. I can be a useful addition. You keep those courses. I can be a useful addition. And by adding me, I would say you can add 10 to 15 points to your score, which will put you above 75%. My offer to you is this. Are you willing to invest $30 to try out my system? I have it. My system is a subscription, but you can cancel. So your maximum loss is $30. Your potential gain is passing the exam. Are you willing to take that chance? Just be simply put, Throw away $30 to find out whether I can help you improve the score, get over 75 and move on with your life or not. You know, it's something that you want to think about. If I was in your shoes, I will do that. Also, if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well or not well your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have the score by section. I do also have other accounting, finance, tax courses as well, please check out my website. If you haven't connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. And on LinkedIn, you can read detailed reviews from students that used my system. Also, you can see this on my website and to see how well they how well they did on the exam by using my system. Please like this recording, share it, put it in playlist, connect with me on Instagram as well as Facebook. Let's take a look at the first question. On January 1st, 2021, the company paid one point uh, 1,870,000 for 80,000 shares of John Voughton stock, which represent 45% investment. No allocation to Goodwill or other specific account was necessary. Significant influence over John was achieved by this acquisition. John distributed dividend of $2 per share during 2021 and reported income of 720. Well, what was the balance in the investment account found in the financial record of these company as of December 31st, 2021. So here, basically what they're asking you is, you have an investment account, investment in equity, and specifically investment in, let's just call it investment in stocks, not call it John, this way, you'll have an investment in stock. Well, let's just, that's fine, put the, the word John. So this is your account, investment in stock. You paid for this investment 1,870,000. Therefore, when you paid for this investment, you increase your investment account by that much. It's a debit, it's an asset. Now, you purchased 45%. Well, you're, you, you don't control the company, but 45%, I would say you have some significant influence. Matter of fact, they're telling you you achieve significant influence. It means under those circumstances, you have to use the equity method. What does that mean if you have to use the equity method? Well, it means you have to account for your investment based on the income and the dividend that the that the subsidiary is generating. 
Now, to make I, they, I could have made this problem a little bit more confusing by giving you the fair value of John's stocks. For example, I'll tell you when you purchased it, the stock was for seventy dollars, and now the stock is seventy-five to confuse you. But if you're using the equity method, fair value is not is not relevant. So what you do now, your investment account will go up and down in proportion to your net income, the net income of the investee and the dividend distributed by the investee. Let me explain. First of all, the John earned 720,000. What does that mean? If they earn 720,000, you should increase your investment by 45% of that amount. Why 45%? Because you own on this company 45%. Therefore, let's go ahead and find out how much 720,000 times 0.45 equal to that's equal 324,000 so what's going to happen you're going to increase your investment by 324,000 this is because of the net income so we accounted for the net income also the company paid two dollar in dividend well they paid two dollars in dividend you have 80,000 shares so you received in cash 160,000 dollar excellent you're going to debit cash. So for this entry, you're going to debit cash 160000 What are you going to credit? Well, what you're going to credit here is not dividend revenue. You're going to credit the investment account. You're going to go, you're going to credit the investment account of John. Okay. So, so since I gave you the entry for the dividend, let me give you the entry for the, for the 320000 For the 324000 you debit investment 324 and you credit revenue from investment 324. So this is the for, the for the net income. So why do we reduce the investment by the dividend? We reduce the investment because this is the same amount. So simply put, you already accounted for all the revenue. 324,000 is all the revenue that you generated from your investment. All what's happening now, when they gave you the 160, they turned the revenue into cash. That's all what they did. They turned some of the investment, they cashed out. Well, actually, Yes, they cashed out 160,000. Now we can find out what is your balance in this account. Simply put, we're going to take 1,870,000, increase it by 324,000, reduce it by 160,000, and that's going to give you a balance of $2,034,000. Now you want to make sure you understand how the equity, this is a basic, real basic question about the equity method. I consider it very basic. But if you understand the basic, that's all what you need to build on your knowledge. But if you don't understand the basics, then you will find difficult time answering the question. Let's take a look at this easy, straightforward question. A necessary condition to use the equity method. What's a necessary condition? For reporting an equity investment, which is what we worked earlier, is that investor company must have what? To, to use the equity method, okay? have the ability to exercise significant influence over the operating and financial policies of the investee. I would say that looks like a good answer, but let's look at the other answers. Own at least 30%. Now, let me tell you this. Let's look at answer A and answer B. When you study for the CPA exam, they'll tell you anything above 20 to 25, you would use the, you would use the, you would use the equity method. So anything above 20 to 25, up to 50, obviously, because above 50, you have control, you would use the equity method. Okay, let me just show you this graph real quick. Not graph, just some, some numbers. So here's what happens. 0 to 20%, you would use the, the cost or the fair value to be more specific. Let's use fair value. You would use the fair value method for your investment. Between 20, again, 20 to 25 to 50%, up to 50%, so let's make it 20 to 50, but sometimes they say 20 to 25, but they don't give you anything between 20 to 25. 20 to 50, you would have to use the equity method. And anything 50 plus, you would have to consolidate. You would have to use, you have control and you have to consolidate. Now here you would say 30% is equity method. But if you have to choose between A and B, you would choose A. Because what matters, what matters is do you have significant influence can you exercise significant influence and this is what determine whether you would use the equity method or not the reason is this because in the real world you could have only 15 percent okay you could only have 15 percent and if you exercise significant influence because because all the other investors they they own one two half a percent then you have significant influence so 
the key to the equity method is the word significant influence. So B, if we don't, if we did not have A as an answer, B will be a good choice. But between A and B, you will choose A because what matter is the word significant influence over the operating and financial policies of the investee. So that's why B is B is not wrong, but A is a better answer. C possess control over the interest in the in investees voting stock. Here you would use consolidation control. You would need 50% plus for financial accounting purposes. Do not have the ability to exercise significant influence. Absolutely, that's the exact opposite. To use the equity method, you have to have significant influence. And what does significant influence means? It means you have enough shares of stocks where you can maybe uh, vote yourself on the board of directors or vote someone that you trust and by doing so, you can assign management. So you do have some influence over the company. Under those circumstances, you would use the equity method. Let's take a look at this question. In 2020, sub reported net income of 650. For 2021, sub reported net income of 800,000. Dividend of 250 were paid in each of the two years. What was the reported uh, balance of the parent investment and in sub? So we have a sub and a parent, and it seems without even reading the question, we're looking at the sub-investment. We invested in a sub, okay? During 2020, the parent acquired 30% outstanding stock of a sub for 1.6 million. But since they're asking me for the investment balance, I'm just gonna start right here, 1.6 million. Debit investment, credit cash. If I paid cash, I could have paid also stocks. The investment gave the parent company the ability to exercise significant influence. That's it. That's all what I have to know, to know I have to account for this investment using the equity method. Subs asset on that date were 7.2 million with liabilities of 3.4 million. Any excess of the cost over book value was attributed attributed to unrecorded patent have a remaining useful life of 10 years. So whatever as uh, whatever extra extra money we paid for this investment, the reason we paid for it because the subsidiary did have a patent, but that patent was not recorded on their books because maybe they created the patent themselves. But now since we purchased the company, we have the right to record that patent. That gives us the right to record the patent. Okay, so now they're asking us, what should be the balance? Basically, simply put, they're asking us about the balance in the sub. Okay, so what do we have to do? First, we have to find out, well, we have net income, we have dividend over the years, but also we have another asset to worry about. It's the patent. Let's start. Let's see. The assets has a, a, were recorded as 7.2 million. Liabilities were 3.4 million. Let's start with that. So let's see what was the uh, book value, 3.8 million. We purchased 30% of this, 30% of this, and that's going to give us 1,140,000. Hold on a second. We paid 1.6 million. So we paid 1.6 million. So we paid 1.6 million for this investment. It's right here. We paid 1.6 million for something that's worth 1,140,000. In other words, we paid access 460,000. Now we are told, we are told the reason we paid this much, the reason we paid this much is because you know, any access is attributed attributed to this patent. Well, simply put, we have a new asset called a patent. So we're going to record this new asset on our books, 460,000. That's why. Now, what are we going to do with the patent? What do we do with the patent? We Gonna, we're going to amortize it, and they're telling us it's over a useful life of 10 years. So this is going to become relevant for us when we do the investment account. Simply put, we're going to take this $460,000 patent divided by 10 equal to $46,000 per year. Now, I doubt that they will give you a question. This would require this much computation on the exam day, but this is... This is not my purpose. My purpose is to teach you the equity method. That's why those questions are a little bit long. It's because I want you to learn the concept. Now... Now let's go ahead and start to update the investment account. The first year we had a net income of 650. Well, what do we do with the 650? We're going to take this. We have an income of 650. What do we do with the 650,000? We're going to multiply it by 30%. And as a result, it's going to increase our equity account by, let me, let me pull the calculator because there's a lot of calculation in this problem. It's going to increase our investment account starting with, okay, so 650,000 times 0.3 and that's going to increase our let me use a different color increase our okay 
increase our investment by 195,000. Again, for the following year, we had an income of 800,000. 800,000. We're going to multiply it by 0.3, and that's going to give us an additional increase in the investment account of 240,000. Now, they paid dividend of 250 for two years, so that made it easy for us. So we're going to take 500,000, multiply it by 0.3 which is 150,000. And what does that mean? It means we reduce our investment by 150,000. So it's so far so good. So this is net income for year one, net income for year two, which increase our investment. And this is dividend. Are we done yet? No, we are not done yet. Why not? Because we're going to have an additional reduction in the investment account as a result of this amortization. So this amortization because it's going to it's basically amortization expense it's simply put it's going to reduce our investment for two consecutive years of 46000 so simply put i'm going to put this in a different color this additional cost okay 46000 this is for the amortization year 1 46000 for the amortization year 2 this is for the patent amortizing the patent that we created on the books that we created on the books because we purchased this company therefore after all, we, after all said and done, now we can compute our balance, which is 1.6 million, the starting investment balance, 1.6 million plus 195,000 plus 195,000 plus 240,000 for year two income minus 150 for the dividend for two years dividend this, this was for two years minus 46,000 minus oops I, I put uh, minus 460,000 minus 46 minus 46 and this should give us if my math is right because I did you know I did let, let me put plus 460 to take it out then do the computation again minus 46,000 minus 46,000 and that's going to give us 1,793,000. And the answer is A. Okay? So this is the answer for the investment account. Let's take a look at this question. Maybe we need a calculator. Let's keep the calculator out here. On January 4th, 2021, parent company purchased 40,000 shares or 40% of the common stock paying 900,000. There was no goodwill or any other cost allocation associated with the investment. So notice the equity method involved a lot of stuff, but here we're trying to keep things simple. Parent has a significant influence over the sub. I'm going to be using the equity method. During 2021, the sub reported income of 240, paid dividend of 75. On January 2nd, the parent company sold 5,000 shares for 125. So here's what they're saying is you made an investment, uh, then you sold part of that investment. So they want us to compute, you know, the investment balance, simply put the investment balance. Let's start with the, let's start with the investment. So we have an investment. We purchased it for 900,000. Debit investment, credit cash, 900,000. Parent, uh, we have significant influence. They reported 240,000 of income. That's fine. Of that, we're going to get, we have 40% of that, and that's 96,000. We're going to increase our investment by 96,000. They reported dividend of 75,000. Again, our share of that is 40%. And as a result, we're going to get 30 so we're going to reduce our investment by 30,000. Now, the the account balance, now you have to understand that we have to first compute the account balance 966. And this 966 represent 40,000 shares. Remember, we purchased 40,000 shares of stocks. 40,000 shares. Of those 40,000 shares, we sold 5,000 shares. Well, we can say, well, if I sold 4,000 I'm sorry, 5,000. Then I have to find out what is 5,000? What is 5,000 divided by 40,000? Simply put, what proportion of my investment I sold? So I sold 5,000 divided by 5,000. Simply put, 5 divided by 40. Let me just clear this. 
5 divided by 40. I sold 12.5% of my investment. This is how much I sold of my investment. What is 12.5? I'm going to take 12.5 multiplied by 966,000. So I sold, I sold, if I multiply this by 966,000, I sold 120,750 of my investment. And I sold it for 125,000. Okay, so simply put, okay, they're asking us, they're not asking us about the gain. If they're asking us about the gain on the sale, the gain would have been minus 125,000. The gain on the sale would have been 4,250. They're not, they're not asking us about the gain. They're asking us what should be the balance. Well, what should be the balance is we need to reduce now our, we need to reduce our investment, reduce because we sold 120,000. 750 12.5 so we're going to take 966,000 and we're going to reduce it by 120,750 and that's going to give us 845 250 845 250 the balance is 845 250 and this is the the answer again i could have asked you what should what's the gain what is the gain the gain would have been 4000 we calculated 4250 so this is basically a series of questions about the equity method. Once again, at the end of this recording, I'm going to invite you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. I can help you understand the material better. Then the CPA review course simultaneously, not then, simultaneously, the CPA review course will help you prepare for the exam. Hand in hand between Farhat Lectures and any of these courses will help you succeed substantially on the exam. Don't shortchange yourself. The CPA exam is a lifetime investment. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.